Okay, and welcome to today's webinar Wednesday. Today's webcast is going to be all about some of Google's lesser known tools. Hopefully, um, what I'm hoping you'll get out of today's webinar is that you will discover some hidden treasures that are located within um, Google's catalog of apps, programs, and websites. And so it's 3.30, so I'm going to go ahead and get started to use our time effectively. And so hopefully, if you are completely logged in, you can find the presentation link in today's chat box. You'll also find that if for any reason you get disconnected from this webcast, you will find the access code and telephone number that will allow you to dial into today's webcast. So again, welcome to Webinar Wednesday. I'm Carla Kuyper, EBR Director of Technology Integration. I'm also a Google for Education Certified Trainer and G Suite Certified Administrator. You can see my contact information on the screen. Please reach out to me with any questions about today's webinar. If you have any questions about the tools or how to implement those or integrate them effectively into your classes, I'd love to talk with you later on after today's um, webcast. And I would be glad to help you integrate any tools that you see today effectively. Once again, here's those dial-in um, numbers and information, the access code and also the phone number in case you get disconnected for any reason. So today's webinar is one in a series of free technology integration webinars. And as you can see, we're in um, well into the spring, into the episodes of Webinar Wednesday for spring 2019. The next webinar coming up will be on May the 1st, and I'll be talking about data analysis and some of the cool tools that are out there. Again, this is one of a series. They're open to anyone who'd like to log in. If you register in advance on our district's Go Sign Me Up website, uh, you'll get reminders from Go Sign Me Up with the link to join in advance. Today's agenda will be all about uh, the tools, but before I talk about the tools, I do want to mention some things about putting technology into perspective, um, especially when we start looking at cool tools so we don't get overwhelmed with kind of the fun and the cool aspects of these technology tools and forget that we have a responsibility to use technology in a purposeful and really productive way. And then once I present the tools, I'll save some time at the end for questions and answers. So I want to mention a word of caution about cool. I know that the title for today's webinar is cool tools, and I do want to emphasize the cool and fun aspects of some of the apps and websites and tools and gadgets that I'm going to share, but I do also want to mention a few things about that. Before using cool digital tools, just a few things to think about, and I don't want to belabor this too much, but I want to mention that learning should always come first and technology should definitely come second. And what I wanted to emphasize is a quote from a gentleman named Weston Kieschnick, and he's really popular and he's been going around and really talking about how to integrate um, technology within a focus of student learning goals and using instructional strategies and really placing those at the forefront. And he likes to say that learning and growth are the king and the queen of the classroom. Technology is the court jester and the court jester is fun and we like the court jester, but we don't put the jester in charge of the kingdom. And so with that statement, I think what he's trying to communicate is that while technology is interesting and we do want to um, emphasize the interesting aspects of these different tools, we want to make sure that learning comes first. So we start with student learning goals. Always keep those at the forefront. Focus on high effect size instructional strategies. And then, and only then, select a digital tool that will help you help students reach their learning goals and enhance those high effect size instructional strategies. And you'll see I've placed a link on this slide that will take you to um, Dr. John Hattie's 
updated list of factors influencing student achievement. And I really like the table that's on this page. It's extremely incredibly helpful and it can help you find the effect size, the revised effect sizes for instructional strategies so that you can take those, pair those up with student learning goals, and then and only then select the technology tools to bring into the classroom. So for example, we can look at strategies such as classroom discussion, emphasizing feedback and see the effect size. And then and only then, once we have our learning goals in front of us, then should we move on to moving um, into the process of selecting digital tools to implement. So with that in mind, let me tell you a little bit about a few lesser known Google tools that are out there that you can use with students, but um, that are really, really interesting. So the first one that I wanna bring into today's presentation is called Google Life Tags. So you may have seen this one before. Google has created an archive of approximately 4 million different photographs organized from Life Magazine. So they added labels, they added tags to each image. And so on this website, you can browse for photos and images by category, and you can even do some keyword searches. So this is a massive, massive number of historical photographs, and students can search um, and learn more about the images that they see. Um, and then also incorporate these into projects. So this is a really, really interesting website. So I can go to an era like the 1940s, find images from throughout the 1940s, including um, the World War II era, and incorporate these into projects. And so why would you use this or why would you allow students to access this tool? Well, anytime um, student understanding would be enhanced in the classroom by accessing historical photos, document-based questions, um, using uh, photographs to conduct analyses of photographs is a big part of social studies. And so in really in any social studies lesson where you could enhance student understanding, then you could check out Google Life Tags. Moving along the same lines as Google Life Tags is a website called Google News. And you may have um, noticed this one before, but I wanted to bring it back in because I think it's pretty interesting. Google News is a website created by Google. It constantly compiles news stories. There are thousands of different topics. If you sign into Google News with your Google account, you can customize the content that you see and save stories and topics. There's also a mobile app as well for Google News. And let me hit that link. So just to take you there so that you can quickly, quickly see Google News. So just I wanted to highlight this left side of the page so that you can see that um, when you're signed in, you can get customized stories, you can create favorites. Again, there are thousands of topics. So it starts out with headlines, but you can create and save searches. So this would be really beneficial for students who are um, trying to follow topics of interest or topics that are being covered in class, current events. Students can create a folder for research or for independent reading. And so that's Google News, which I think is a really great resource. Along the lines of Google News is the Google Newspaper Archive. And it is exactly what it says. It's an archive of historical newspapers. Um, Google has, um, in the last couple of years, stopped supporting, fully supporting Google Newspaper Archive. Unfortunately, the website is still accessible. You can still get to it and find uh, newspapers from the past However, um, they don't up really update it too much anymore. So I wanna just give you fair warning that keyword searching on this website does not always work, but you can go through and if you can find um, newspapers from the past, students can go in and find historical articles, um, interesting articles about 
events from the past, and even primary source documents. And each newspaper listed in the archive has information about the number of issues available and the time span that it covers. All right, let me jump back. Okay, so the next interesting Google tool that you may not have heard of before is called Google Takeout. And um, Google Takeout is a little tool that Google makes available that will allow you to download your data. Um, you can export and download data from Google products like Google Drive. Um, if you use Gmail on a personal account, uh, entries from your Google Calendar, Google Photos. Um, in a few easy steps, you can create a zip file of data from your Google accounts to create an archive. And um, you might be wondering why you would want to do this, but actually uh, many times high school students can and do need to download data when they're moving on um, in, on to college and onto their careers. And they want to archive projects and papers that they've written for later access. Um, this can be a really good feature, and so students who are moving in, on in 11th and the 12th grade might want to use Google Takeout to create an archive of class projects and papers. Google Tilt Brush is a really interesting website. It, this one has um, a lot of potential. It's fairly new, and it allows students to design, create, and explore some really interesting art concepts. I have to admit, I've never seen anything quite like Google Tilt Brush. I'll take you to the website so that you can see it. You need to have the um, Oculus or Windows Mixed Reality style headsets. And if you have a 3D headset, Tilt Brush will allow you to paint in 3D space using virtual reality. And again, I have never seen anything quite like this, so I thought it was kind of interesting. And I'll hit a link to one of the videos just for a few seconds. And so this video was created with Google Tilt Brush using virtual reality and a 3D headset. So again, this could create something really dynamic and really interesting in an art or maybe a digital media design classroom. And again, this tool is called Google Tilt Brush. Along the same lines as Tilt Brush is a tool called Toontastic. Now this is a mobile app and it allows the students to draw, animate, and narrate cartoons. It's a free app, and teachers are using Toontastic to do things like allowing students to do digital storytelling, creation of visuals, and students cre create um, scripts and build their writing skills when they're using Toontastic, when they need to draw, animate, and narrate. Um, for example, in social studies, students can draw, animate, and narrate historical characters. Or in ELA, they could do that for characters in a story. So students are building higher order thinking while enhancing their writing skills and being very creative and going through the design process all at the same time using Toontastic. The link that I'm going to hit will show you the app. There are also tips there. And um, it'll show you how you can download the Android or the um, iOS application. So next up is an app called One Today. It's a mobile app and it was created by Google to show students and also adults how $1 can make a difference or even change someone's lives. So in class, sometimes students understand that there are challenges out there in the world and they want to help, but sometimes they have difficulty coming up with practical ideas. And so one today is a concept put together by Google. Again, this is a mobile app 
that you can download for Android or for Apple. And they suggest a variety of different projects. And um, if you're signed in with your Google account, you can go in, you can learn more about these really unique efforts that are designed to inspire and help others. And you can give $1, uh, $1 very, very quickly using this app. The cool thing about this is that these are um, United States-based nonprofits. They've been validated by Google. They've also been validated by the IRS. There are no transaction fees when you make a donation, it's tax deductible, and they don't give these nonprofit groups your um, private contact information. So you can make donations to others and support others anonymously if you don't want to um, provide your contact information. So this is a great way um, students can also learn more about people in need and also take practical actions. Another cool tool that I wanted to share with you today is called Google Fonts. So Google has created a site loaded just with different fonts. So if you're ever working in Google Docs, Slides, um, or any other application and you would like to incorporate different fonts and you're not finding the styles that you're looking for, go to fonts.google.com. And you'll see that on this website, there are 915 different font families. So if you're creating a presentation, um, working um, on a Google Doc, you'll find that there are tons and tons of different fonts. To um, add a font to your collection, you simply select it. And then um, you'll see that you can take a closer look at it if you would like to. You can also do things like um, create a zip file of all of the different fonts that you add to your collection. So you'll see at the bottom here are the fonts that I've added to my collection. And if I hit the um, tab that shows the families that I've selected, I can go in and I can share these with a hyperlink or I can even download them into a file. And you can see it creates a zip archive. Later, I can add these fonts into a Google Doc. So that tool is Google Fonts. Waze is a um, GPS navigation app created by Google. Many people um, familiar with Waze are not uh, familiar with the fact that it was created by Google. So it is a crowdsourced navigation software app. You can get it to work on smartphones and you can also get it to work on tablets that have GPS support. So one of the cool things about Waze is that it can get um, students, it can help students understand uh, things like real-time communication, real-time collaboration. It can help students um, learn how to map out travel routes. And um, it's a pretty interesting app because it allows um, the user to uh, find the fastest way to get somewhere and all of the information in ways comes from users. Along the same lines as Waze is an interesting tool called Google Earth Time Lapse. And Google Earth Time Lapse is a version of Google Earth. So if you're familiar with Google Earth, it shows you um, imagery of our entire planet. So Google Earth time lapse shows a time lapse of imagery. And so it's layers and layers of images and that really shows how areas change over time. And so I'll show you what that looks like. I'll hit the link. And so hopefully if you see my screen, you can see the Google Earth engine. It's kind of zoning in on uh, Miami. 
Florida and how Miami, Florida has changed over time. It's pretty dramatic and pretty interesting to watch. So anytime students are working with maps in um, social studies classes, history classes, and they're trying to understand the impact of human migration, movement, change across time, not just human change, but also geologic change uh, can be studied using the Google Earth Engine. And so this doesn't just work on Florida, you can also check out other areas using the Google Earth Engine and all this time-lapse photography. So again, why would you want to use this? Um, to help students understand immigration trends, growth of, uh, growth of cities, and then also geological and environmental changes. Along with Google Earth Time Lapse is a tool called Google My Maps. And so in, with Google My Maps, you can create custom maps. Students can come to Google My Maps, create a new map, drop pins on a blank map, and map out historical events. The nice part about Google My Maps is that you can then share those maps with others and even compare maps with other people. Now the classroom application for this, um, there are many, many different ones. I'll name just a few. Um, mapping locations and stories. Mapping student personal stories. So students uh, mapping travels and journeys that they've been on in their own lives. And then also mapping out historical events. So if you're familiar with Google Maps and you use Google Maps, check out Google My Maps. The next tool is Google Trends, trends.google.com. And what Google Trends does is that it will show you what internet users are searching for using Google search at a given time or possibly even across time. It's kind of interesting. I'll hit this hyperlink to show you what that looks like visually. So these are real live, real time searches that are going on in uh, Google search right now. Here's the trends website. And it can allow students to explore what the world is searching about. And so some suggested searches are posted on the homepage of the website, or you could go in and search on a topic of your own. So I typed in Game of Thrones. And so now Google Trends is going to show me the interest in this topic across time, specifically for the past 12 months, or I could change that and look at the interest in Game of Thrones just in the last seven days. And there it is. And of course, interest in Game of Thrones tends to peak on the days when the series is broadcast. I can also look at the interest in Game of Thrones by its subregion, related topics, other queries that are related to Game of Thrones. And so you might be wondering, well, how, how might I incorporate this in my class? Well, interestingly enough, teachers use Google Trends to assist students in finding topics of current interest. Also um, to help increase student digital literacy uh, because the Google Trends website can help students understand how search engines work and so what comes up on a Google search is one of those things that many times students have a difficult time understanding. And so um, Google Trends helps to visualize that, that understanding and help them gain a deeper understanding of how search engines and why search engines return the results that they do. While we're on the topic of Google search is Google reverse image search. 
And so Google reverse image search is interesting and you can um, use Google reverse image search to find related images using an image. It's an advanced type of Google search and it can help students understand how to cite sources for images and also help students um, find the source image, sometimes for images that have been photoshopped or that have been changed over time, which can be kind of interesting. So here's Google image search. If I search by image, I can paste the image URL and I have uh, the URL of, a, of an image. So I'll paste that in, search by image. Notice you can also upload from your computer. And so now it pulls in all of the pages or recent pages, similar images to that image, all from an image. So that's Google reverse image search. In addition to image search, the next tool is called Poly, and it allows students and teachers to browse, discover, and download 3D objects. So it's a project that Google created to allow uh, users to create, um, distribute, and share 3D objects. It's intended to make it really easy to allow students to create 3D objects. And I'll show you an example of an, a painting by Vincent van Gogh changed into a 3D object using poly. You can see it takes a minute. And so here's a famous painting by Vincent van Gogh, Starry Night, turned into a 3D uh, rendering and shared on the Google Poly website. Again, there's a free library of 3D objects, and these 3D objects can be downloaded and used to create virtual reality and also augmented reality projects. Another Google experiment, Google is famous for creating all of these experimental websites where they simply put some tools out there and allow students and teachers to create and um, allow them to share their creations with the world. This one's called Chrome Music Lab. And so Chrome Music Lab is an experiment It's actually a group of experiments, about 12 or 13 different experiments as of this webcast. And it allows students and teachers to help students understand how music is created and how music is made. And so once you're in the site, you can begin creating your own music you can even um, attach a microphone and speak or sing into the microphone along with the tempo, play it back, save it, share it. And I'll show you an example of a student using Chrome Music Lab. I think there may be a few different examples here on this hyperlink. Okay, here it comes. These students are using Chrome Music Lab. So anytime um, students can benefit from learning more about how music is created, Chrome Music Lab is a fantastic tool that teachers can use. And so why would you wanna bring this in well, music 
has many connections to science, math, um, art, and even additional subjects. So anytime students can learn more about music while supporting math, and science standards at the same time, for example, learning about fractions when they learn about half beats and quarter notes and so on, um, then Chrome Music Lab might be a great tool to incorporate. Okay, Meme Buddy is the next cool Google tool that I wanna share, and it's a mobile app. Uh, I'll show you the website. You'll want to go in and download the mobile app if you're interested in using this one. And it's, uh, it's created by Google and it allows students to create memes. And so you might be wondering, well, why would I want um, students to create memes? Well, our students are already creating memes on Instagram and Snapchat, and Twitter and Facebook all the time anyway. So why not use memes to reinforce what you're teaching? Post memes in the classroom or within online units that reflect current lessons. Have students use um, memes to increase their vocabulary or even to introduce new topics. So I'll take you to the site. Again, here at the website, you'll want to download the mobile app. And I'll hit the preview on this. And I'll pull up a um, random meme since I'm not really using the mobile application. And you'll see how it starts to create a mobile app. But on the mobile app, you can go in and you can um, add your own text, create an image, and then also add your voice. So interesting app is called Meme Buddy. The next one is called Data GIF Maker. And what it does is allow students to compare data, helps them understand data visually, and it can also help students collect and analyze real world information. I'll take you to the site. It's an experiment created by Google News Lab, and you can get started just by selecting a theme so let's do something with circles. Set up a couple of values. And you'll see um, the way that Data Gift Maker works is that it creates um, a real uh, visual analysis of those two numbers. And so it lets students to pick, you can pick between three different types of graphs as you just saw. You can add that multiple data entries. And so it then allows the student to visualize the data. Once you have your data um, visualization set up, you can preview it. You can also save it and then even embed it in additional projects. So this can be a great way to let students explore interesting data, um, show how they understand real world information and then share that information with other students. All right, coming to the end, um, I have just have a few left. This one is pretty interesting. It's called Google Grasshopper. And so it's a mobile app. You'll want to download the app for Android or for Apple. And it's a fantastic way to start coding. It's a free app that provides basic le lessons in coding in JavaScript. So it may be for students who are a little bit older, but the fun part about it is I think even young students could benefit from this app because it presents JavaScript in a gamified format all through coding puzzles. And then lastly, the last um, cool tool that I'm going to mention in this webcast is called Google Digital Garage. Google Digital Garage is a set of free online courses covering a number of different skill areas. 
And um, when I came across Google Digital Garage, I was really amazed at how much that they've placed here and how quickly they've built up this website. So you can come to Google Digital Garage and you can find courses on data and technology, digital marketing, developing your career. You can choose a skill or a group of skills, learn at your own pace and track your project. And the best part is that all of it is totally free. So if you're working with students in a setting where they're focusing on um, building their college resume, focusing on career development, you can have them log into Google Digital Garage and they can learn skills like uh, navigating a job interview, networking, business communication, public speaking, and much, much more. Why use Google Digital Garage? Well, anyone can use these learning experiences. Again, they're free. Teachers, we can use them, support staff, students. There's a variety of different skills covered here. And so let's take this um, talk Q&A here. So which of these tools are you interested in after today's uh, webcast? I'm going to stop at this point and take your questions. Um, anything that you want to ask or anything that you want to think, uh, anything you think about these tools, um, which one are you most interested in? I'm hoping that after today, you might take one tool and begin to incorporate it in what you do or introduce it to a class that you work with. So tell me what you think. And again, I'll be around just to take your questions and to chat with you about all of the different tools. So thanks for joining in for today's webcast. Like I mentioned a little while ago, I'll be around to hear what you think about some of these tools or what you'd like to do next with some of them or maybe what you'd like to learn next about some of these different tools. In addition to this webcast, you can check out um, more information on our team's website, ebrschoolsedtech.org. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. The recording of this webinar, if you missed anything and you want to go back to it, will be posted on the YouTube channel. I usually post it um, about a day after the broadcast, so it should be there tomorrow. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, or you can contact me through my email, call me at the PDC, or even stop by the PDC, and I'd be glad to talk with you about any questions that you have about today's webcast. Okay, great. Hi, Patricia. Thanks for the comment. Um, yes, Toontastic, I think, is a great, um, cool tool that you could use to build vocabulary and to create digital stories. And I like it because I like the idea that students are building their writing skills all while they're um, having a fantastic time. <laughs> 